Okay, so a uh, short video on um, how to use error intervals and bounds um, up to grade five. So um, up to, you know, suitable for foundation level and uh, beginning of higher level papers. Um, basically, we've got to think of an error interval as uh, an error that's possible when you've measured or counted something. So when we measure things, um, we give them to given accuracies. So for example, if you're using a ruler, you might measure to the nearest millimetre but the actual length could have been slightly longer or slightly less than what you actually write down. Um, so this is about uh, how that works. So we've got a calculator here. It's um, got a number. She's wrote down the first two digits of the answer on our calculator and she wrote down 7.3. So on our calculator then she could have had a number that went 7.31 blah 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 7.39 blah 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 blah. Um, it could have been as low as 7.3 of course. It could have just been 7.3. So this is an example of what we call truncation. So she's truncated her answer. So literally she's not bothered what comes after it. She's just literally just wrote down what she felt was important, the first two digits. So when the question says write down an error interval, then we should always be thinking that the error interval, uh, some number, has got to be less than a given upper bound and greater than or equal to a lower bound. And these are just fancy words to mean boundaries. So you've literally got to think uh, if you've got a number line and on this uh, number line is 7.3 and we've gone along and we didn't write the number of 7.4 so we went up as far as we could and um, we didn't actually write down the 7.4. So the answer to this then is literally saying to us that our upper boundary, we can't have 7.4, so we would write that as less than 7.4. But our lower boundary, we could have had 7.3 because it said that she wrote it down as 7.3. So our lower, our lower bound is equal to that as well. So when it says write an error interval, then we literally write x is less than 7.4 but greater than or equal to 7.3. So that tells us that it could be anything. So it could have been 7.399999 gone on forever, um, as close to 7.4 as possible, but it wasn't 7.4 itself. So that's how that one would work when you're working with truncated numbers. So again, drawing the number line out sometimes helps you to see what's going on. Okay, so another example here then, we've got um, a value of 60, 160,000 correct to two significant figures. Now, what we've got to remember then, what that means is we have this number 160,000. Two significant figures means that the first non-zero digit is the first significant figure, the second follows it. So basically we rounded to that column. Now what we can see in this case is that was the units column, that was the tens, that was the hundreds, that was the thousands, so that's ten thousands. So in other words, we've rounded to the nearest ten thousands. So if you imagine what this looks like, we were given 160,000 as our answer. The next number up in ten thousands would have been 170,000. The one below that would have been 150,000. And of course, um, it's been rounded to 160,000. So if we'd have gone halfway, anything up here would have been rounded to that. So a boundary here would have been 165,000 and that would have been our upper bound. And our lower bound, well, anything below 155,000 would have been rounded down to 150,000 to correct the two snow figures. So we're basically saying that this is our lower boundary. So when it says write down the least possible value of the house, then of course that's our bottom end because if we wrote the error interval for this, then we'd be saying that the price is less than 165,000, but greater than or equal to the lower bound, which would have been 155,000. So when it says what's the least possible value, then it would have been 155,000. And when it says write down the greatest possible value, well, that would have been our upper bound, 160,000. Now we do include, although it says less than 165,000, write the right number. Um, when it says um, the greatest possible value, we would include the 165 as the upper boundary. I know it says less than as the error interval, 
but you've got to realize that um, as it's money you could have gone to 164,999 pounds 99p which is near as uh, Damn it! Basically, excuse the language, but 165,000. So that would have been uh, the boundary for that one. I mean, that's you know, in all honesty, if you'd have wrote down 164,999, 164,999 pounds and 99p, that would have been acceptable as well. So another example. Um, they talk here about a number is rounded to two snippet figures, and it's been given as 0.46. So that means that um, if we drew the number line out to see how this uh, scale works, this measuring scale that they've used, um, we could have had 0.46. The next one up would have been 0.47. The one below that would have been 0.45. Um, but they said that they rounded to 0.46. So that means there must have been a boundary halfway between those. Whereas if it was below that, it would have gone up. And if it was above that, it would have gone up. But it went to this. So everything between here, the lower bound, and everything between here, the upper bound, all goes to this. So halfway there would be 0.465 and halfway here would have been 0.455. So when it says uh, write down the error interval we know that error intervals must start with that and then you've got to decide what your boundaries are. So the upper bound goes this side so 0.465 and the lower bound goes the other side 0.455. So drawing the scale out, uh, putting the number on that they actually give you and then thinking uh, how that scale would work in uh, this two decimal places uh, case, if you're 0 0.46, 0 0.47 and so on, and then going halfway between, it then allows you to think about uh, where the boundaries are. Uh, this next example, it talks about rounding a number to one decimal place and the result is 9.8. So again, if we draw the number line out to kind of get a feel for what this is talking about, and they're working with a scale that's gone 9.8, 9.9 and below that 9.7 and our boundaries would be halfway between so our upper bound would equal 9.85 and our lower bound would equal 9.75 <coughs> everything between here would go to this everything above here would go to that so when it says write down the error interval then we put the x because it's about x and again all error intervals start like that uh, with the, what's the variable inside the two inequality signs and the upper bound goes this side so 9.85 and the lower bound goes the other side 9.75 so that would be the answer to that one uh, this question talks about uh, Lynn uh, measuring a length of a piece of string she's given it a 3.57 correct to the nearest millimeter okay so it's correct to the nearest millimeter and we've got to write down the error interval okay so in this case we've got a scale that's going 3.5 3.6 3.4 again look at the accuracy of the number given and then just write a scale out using that accuracy uh, going tenths so this one went to a tenth that one went down a tenth and the boundaries is the halfway point so the other bound here would be 3.55 and our lower bound here would be 3.45 so we know those are our boundaries again it's talking about a length x so our error interval is going to have x with the two inequality symbols going in those directions our upper bound goes this side which was 3.55 and our lower bound goes this side which is 3.45 um, and that would be the answer to this question. Um, you might want to put units uh, down because it can be useful. Uh, but otherwise, that's what um, in this word should be. Um, yeah. Alright, the next one. Um, it talks about a number being truncated. So, again, this is about. Um, let's just, just stop. It's been truncated to 3.4. So, a decimal is truncated to 3.4. Truncation means that you're not bothered what comes after it. So therefore, the scale this time is literally doing this, where anything up to this, which would have been your upper bound, down to this, which would have been your lower bound, would be it. So let's say kind of just carefully and type that number that have been truncated. Then the error into them, uh, we have a spare decimal in there, so we can put D for decimal in there. Uh, error into the symbol is still be the same. Less than one centimetre of round, greater than equal to the lower bound. So the lower bound would have been 3.4. So in other words, the lowest it could have been would be 3.4 itself. 